วัสดีค่ะ Welcome to the Nation Daily. This is the edition for November 17, 2023. You are with Stephanie and Tulip. And of course, for a story, we have to report to you what's going on in San Francisco because <laughs> our prime minister is there, being a sell man that he is, that yes. he said he has to be for the country. He is trying to sell in Thailand really hard. Every time he go meet any business people or the leader of any countries, and latest development is that he just met with the Canadian Prime Minister, uh, Justin Trudeau. Yes, yes. and uh, reportedly they said that they will explore more about cooperation, bilateral agreement, and of course free trade agreement. Thai Prime Minister Seta Thawisin and Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau met on the sideline of EPEC 2023 in San Francisco, where they mutually expressed a commitment to enhance and broaden cooperation between their countries, including exploring possibilities for more comprehensive bilateral relationships such as free trade agreement. Canadian Prime Minister reportedly said that Thailand is an important trading partner for Canada and that his country is ready to work with the Thai government, both at bilateral and regional levels, in order to continue the dynamic relationship and cooperation in various fields. While Thailand and Canada currently do not have a free trade agreement, ongoing negotiations for the ASEAN-Canada free trade agreement present a valuable opportunity for increased connectivity between the two countries. So our Prime Minister met with so many leaders, talked to a lot of business people, so I'm sure there will be some good things come out of this. So we're going to expect uh, positive outcomes and we also want expect a positive outcome from Loi Gatong, which is Thailand's Festival of Light. Uh, we're expecting to generate about 6.1 billion baht in tourism from 2.04 million domestic tourists. So it's an increase from five and 10 year on year, respectively, according to the Tourism Authority of Thailand. Loi Gatong is celebrated on a full moon night of the 12th lunar year, and this year it falls on the 27th November. So Thais will launch decorated floats or Gatong onto water bodies to pay respect to Paman Kongka, the goddess of water. The festival is also celebrated with fireworks, and in certain parts of Thailand, they also launch lanterns into the sky. Thai government estimates that during the festival, about 2.04 million Thais will travel to provinces that host big celebrations such as Bangkok, Sukhothai, Chiang Mai, bringing an average uh, hotel occupation rate of about 58%. So, uh, however, recent surveys show that 40% of Thais plan to celebrate Lor Gatong in their hometown, while 39 plan to travel to nearby provinces to celebrate Lor Gatong. How are you? I'm probably going to stay at home with my dogs. <laughs> I, I usually, I never go celebrate like a tongue anywhere. Usually just in, in Bangkok. I think it's always a last minute plan with me and so, my yeah. friends. We, we was like, okay, let's go out to this place. They have like a big festival and maybe some food and a market. And I think that it's just fun and games. True. And it, it's, uh, even though it's a big festival, but it's also not a national holiday. So that's no. why a lot of people tend to just stay in their hometown or yes. somewhere not far from their hometown. It's more of a after work activity. True. And next story, I never think I will be able to <laughs> or I will have a chance to report a story about iguana. A lot of them run free in the rural area of Thailand. So we're talking about iguana situation in Lobbery province. So it's going to be iguanas versus monkeys? I don't know. And the thing is, <laughs> since this new broke out, we haven't talked about monkeys. Nobody ever talked. Maybe they are in different district because this one happened in Pathananikom district of Lopburi province. Um, the, the people, the locals have been complaining that there's a lot of eagerness running around, damaging their crops and other things. So they want authority to do something about it. Latest development is that the Wildlife Authority are conducting a survey in the province, in that district, to see exactly how many iguanas <laughs> there are in there and what can they do with it. So the locals said that these iguanas have been damaging crops and plants in the area and they eat everything and they're persistent to return after being chased away is creating problem. Officials are using various vegetables to lure iguanas residing on the trees branches near water sources, aiming to conduct a population count and experiment with capture methods. It's just to picture what I read, it's already sound 
Um, I mean, it chaotic. sounds funny and it, it looks funny in our mind, but I, I think it's a serious issue. Well, they said, the villagers said that some lizards are five to six years old, but they have been having these problems for about 10 years already. We never, we never heard about I, this I've problem. never heard. We only heard about, like, monkeys terrorizing yeah. the city of Lopuri. Yeah, but the uh, iguana problem, we just heard about it this week. And they said there are approximately about 100 large iguanas <sighs> and as many as 1,000 small ones in various colors. A hundred big, big one, they talk <laughs> about like half a meter size, that kind of thing. Small one is about like this oh. size. And villagers express skepticism about the effectiveness of the, the, the way they're capturing these iguanas. But reducing the population of iguana is seen as a potential solution, especially during the dry season, where their numbers usually increase. So, we'll Mating season. We'll see how it comes out, <laughs> you know. I don't know how long it's going to take to... Um, do the iguana consensus? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, it's a it's a a little bit crazy job to have right now. I think I can't imagine what I would do if I was like, okay, go catch some iguanas about a hundred or something. You have to apply the job with the wildlife department <laughs> first, and then they will order you to go assess the population of iguanas and come up with a method to take care of them. Oh, it's a tough job. Yes. <laughs> Now, next story from Iguana, we will go to meteors, meteor showers. I remember first time I saw in my life was in Thailand too, many, many, many years back when I was little, and it's such an amazing experience. So tonight, after midnight, there will be another meteor shower in Thailand. The National Astronomical Research Institute of Thailand, or we call them NERIT for short, said that people should keep an eye out for the Leonid meteor shower that will light up the eastern skies from after midnight tonight until early Saturday morning. It is estimated that the Leonid shower will see as many as 15 meteors an hour fall to Earth from 1 a.m. onwards. Weather conditions will also be optimal for viewing, thanks to an expected cloudless sky with no moonlight. The Leonid meteor shower this year will be centered around the Leo constellation to the east of the sky and can be observed with the naked eye. For the best experience, the agency advises stargazers to let their eyes become accustomed to the dark about 30 minutes before viewing the meteor shower. And for any other news you want to know about Thailand, be sure to log on to our website, nationthailand.com. And we have all the social media platforms that you can follow. We have Twitter, YouTube, not Twitter, X. X. YouTube, <laughs> Facebook, TikTok, Instagram. And that's it for today. Sadiha. Sadiha.